Let's talk about the healthcare power of attorney. Like it sounds, it is for healthcare. What that means is that um, if you're in the hospital and you can't speak for yourself because you're under anesthesia, for example, well, somebody has to speak for you. And if you've ever gone into the hospital and you had a surgery, you know that if you don't come in with your own healthcare power of attorney, the hospital will um, have you sign their own form, which it's good and it's bad. It's good because it gets you through the situation that they can speak to whomever you said, yeah, talk to my, uh, my spouse, my husband, or, you know, my adult child, they'll be able to tell you what to do, um, when I'm, you know, under anesthesia. So it gets you through that situation. But you know, the reason I don't like it is that it kind of takes away the thought that, well, maybe I should actually have a true estate plan put in place, not just a form that the hospital had me sign so that they knew who to talk to, but something that really reflects my own wishes. So I do believe that having, um, you know, an attorney help you with your estate plan and not just the hospital give you a form would be a really uh, advisable thing to do. So healthcare power of attorney is so that somebody can make medical decisions for you. And those medical uh, decisions, as you can see from my screen, includes terminating life support. I mean, those are really serious things to think about. Um, so it's really important that in advance of any crisis that you have given thought to these types of situations and you have discussed it with a person who is going to be the person you've appointed as your attorney, in fact. Under a healthcare power of attorney, they're also called a healthcare agent. Um, of course, they can access your medical records and um, do those others, anything that you could do when it comes to healthcare, including talking about your end of life wishes. So let's talk about that. What are your end of life wishes? So this is what's called an advanced directive, healthcare directive. Sometimes you'll hear it called a living will, which is kind of confusing because it is not a will in any regard. It is, what do you want if you are deemed to be at end of life? So here's where you say, you know, if you, if the doctors have said, there's not gonna be any hope of medical treatment making you better, then withdraw life support, for example. Uh, this is very useful, um, especially in younger people. And you can bet that younger people rarely, rarely give the time and the thought to filling out a healthcare directive or powers of attorney. So if you do have a college age student and you know they're going off in the world and they're independent, maybe as the parent, you wanna talk with them about it. Maybe you don't, I mean, I know it's hard to talk about and that's one reason that people kind of put their head in the sand and ignore, you know, estate planning because nobody wants to think about these things, but maybe as a parent, you do want to talk about things with your kids. Um, sometimes the easiest way to open the discussion is saying, hey, this is what my wishes are. And I kind of think yours would be the same, but am I right? What are your wishes? That's what an advanced healthcare directive is.